Here is the question that I asked at the end of the previous part of this lecture. And like so many things, this essentially just comes down to unit analysis. So let's focus on the units. We have a specific energy, which is in, let's say, joules per kilogram, and a mass density that is in kilograms per meter cubed. We want something in joules per meter cubed. And so if you just think about how the units must combine, we are going to need to multiply the specific energy by the mass density. The kilograms will cancel out and we'll get an answer in joules per meter cubed. So if you do that, you come up with 1.9 times 10 to the 10 joules per meter cubed, or in other words, 19 gigajoules per meter cubed. Let's just finish up by talking about typical efficiencies of power plants that produce power by burning fossil fuels. All of them roughly follow this flowchart that we've seen in an earlier video. The exception is that some natural gas plants do something a little more complicated, which I'll discuss in a bit. Notice that in the middle we have the turbine, which is taking in thermal energy from the boiler and converting some of it to mechanical energy. That means the turbine is a heat engine and it's operating between a hot reservoir, which is the, bo the boiler, and a cold reservoir, which is the environment. The usual term used for power plants that operate this way is thermal plants, because they are turning thermal energy into useful work. And in a pretty typical thermal plant, the superheated steam coming out of the boiler is at about 600 Celsius, and it's being vented to the outside, which is perhaps about 30 degrees Celsius. So this allows us to use the Carnot efficiency to estimate the maximum possible efficiency of a power plant like this. And if we just use the Carnot efficiency equation, we get an estimate of about 64%. Now, note the Carnot efficiency is a theoretical maximum. No actual heat engine can ever achieve this. And indeed, actual efficiencies for power plants using this sort of arrangement are typically around 40%. However, we know that we can improve efficiency by either lowering Tc or raising Th. So a pretty logical question is why don't we just do this? Well, both are fixed by fairly practical considerations. The Tc is set by the ambient temperature outside the power plant, and so we can't really do very much about that. Th, on the other hand, is fixed by technological considerations. It's limited by the materials of the turbine blade, blades and the pipe welds and what temperatures they can tolerate. So the job of increasing TH is actually a very difficult technological job of metallurgy and developing better metals to build these components out of. So you will probably be unsurprised to find out that there are fairly major efforts underway to come up with better materials to improve the uh, high temperature in power plants. Also, some gas plants use a different layout than this called a combined cycle, which for technical reasons allows them to use a hotter TH. But if you want to know more about that, I'll point you to resources where you can read about combined cycle power plants.